Knutson. and I'm so glad Mr. Shockley's in the unit now. Oh, me too. Tiny definitely needed to come. Yeah. So it looks like your first fluid bolus has just finished that yeah. 500. And I do think that we're worried about sepsis. I am for sure with his altered mental status. You know, he's breathing more than 22 mm -hmm. times a minute. Blood pressure is less than 90. Yeah. So looking at the Q SOFA score, oh, okay. uh, that definitely makes that very high on my list. Okay. So well, he's uh, got blood cultures and we've given antibiotics. Fantastic. So uh, the next thing we need to think about is how much fluid are we going to give him. So there's okay. specific guidelines for sepsis. Do you know how much fluid we're supposed to give? No, I don't know how much fluid. So 20 to 30 mLs per kilo okay. are what the guidelines will yeah. tell you. And we don't always know patients' weight, so I, I kind of two liters. Like if okay. two liters doesn't fix them, then I start looking down the path of we're more than likely going to need pressors. Okay. So just going back, you know, the only thing they had on the floor was an 18 gauge, and the yeah. nurses have looked, and we have not been able to get anything else. So I got one of those blood cultures from this general. From his, okay, well, great. So I, I think right now, before we go any further, let's continue with another liter of fluid. Okay. Get an arterial line and a central line in, and okay. then reassess. Okay, that sounds good. Okay. Good. All right, so we got our, our central line in place. We've got about two liters of fluid in. We've started some norepinephrine yep. uh, since it's the presser of choice for sepsis. Yep. And you know, everyone always asks, how much do I give? I just tell the nurses to titrate from a uh, mean arterial pressure of 65. Okay. And then to let me know if they're having to go up on the dose. Okay. Okay. And so that gives me an idea of do we still need more fluid? Okay. Yeah, I mean, now that he's on a presser and his nap is still less than 65. You know, how do we know if we need to give them more fluid? That's a great question, and one that we talk about all the time is how do we monitor? How do we know when we've had enough? So I start back to the basics. Go okay. back to physical exam. All right. And we know that he was cold through his knees earlier, so I kind of run up, and it looks like he's warm up to about mid shin, so yeah. we're making a lot of progress. Yeah, but see, that's confusing to me because I thought with sepsis, you know, you, you should like vasodilate and get really warm. That's exactly right, and that's what I always try to teach everybody. My patient's septic, I expect them to have warm extremities. Uh -huh. So when you need to do further investigation is when those thoughts don't match. Okay. So in a patient who has cold extremities and sepsis, then I worry about they're still volume responsive okay. or they've got myocardial depression from sepsis, which happens about a third of the time. Okay. So Usually, you're thinking we need to give more fluid then? I think we need to give more fluid, but there's a couple things that we can do to check. Okay. Uh, so one is now that we've got this central line, we can send off a mixed venous gas and look what our SVO2 is. Okay. Same um, thing in sepsis, we'd expect it to be high. Right. Um, what about strict volume variation? Can we do that now that he has an art line? Great thought. So looking at the trying to figure out what his cardiac output is, and so it looks at um, the area under the curve. Unfortunately, that's only validated in patients who are on the ventilator oh. and sedated. So okay, well. one thing that we can do, they do in the MICU all the time, is the passive leg raise. Okay. So basically auto-transfusing about a liter or so uh, into the chest. You might have seen actually on Gomer blog, where they talk about skinny jeans being the new treatment for sepsis, <laughs> okay. kind of compressing that all and putting it back up. Okay, so I'll look it up. All right, I'll send a mixed venous. <laughs> yeah, let's okay. send a mixed venous and then let's do this passive leg raise. Okay. So normally, what you'd expect is your heart rate to come down and your blood pressure to go up. Okay, but in fact, uh, sometimes should in him, because of the liver laceration and the broken leg, our heart rate may not come down. Okay, well, should we lay him flat? Abs to do that? Yes, gotta lay him flat to get started. Okay. Thanks, all Allison. right, Mr. Shaffer, we're gonna lay down here. Uh, so let's go ahead and do the passive leg raise now that you've okay. got him la laid down. It definitely is a two-person job. And we want to make sure that we're respecting patient's modesty when we do this as well. Okay? All right. One, two, three. Okay. All right. So we can see his blood pressure has gone up about 10 points. Heart rate's down a little bit, which, you know, I think that this might be a little painful for him. Okay, Mr. Shockley, we're going to put your legs back down here, sir. Nice job. And then I watch as they're coming back down too and, okay. uh, and see what happens. Blood pressure heading back down, heart rate going back up. So it looks to me like he still needs a little bit more fluid. He's okay. volume responsive. So, you know, the nurses were able to weigh him. He's 100 kilos. We've just given two liters so far. Okay. So why don't we go ahead and give that third liter okay. and then see where we are. And then we'll follow up on that central venous gas. Okay. And then the other thing to think about is, you know, going back and just looking at all the stuff you sent off the floor, other causes of shock. So yeah. we're thinking that this is sepsis. Right. So the chest x-ray came back. There's no pneumothorax on the right side. Okay. So not worried about that. 
His CBC came back and he's actually hemoconcentrated, so I'm not worried about hemorrhagic shock. Okay. Um, EKG really looked okay. I All didn't right. see any acute ST changes. But the one thing that I also to think about is, you know, he could have a DVT down here in this lower extremity mm -hmm. with a broken leg and it's been kind of bedridden. I can't really tell a size differential. Okay. Uh, I don't think he's stable right now to go downstairs for a VQ scan. But what we can do to kind of help us make sure we're on the right page is POCUS or point of care ultrasound. Okay, I can go get it. That would be great. Why don't you grab the ultrasound and let's right. see what we can find out while that third liter of fluid finishes. So if this third liter of fluid does not make our blood pressure better, that's when we add in a second vasopressor. Okay. And that would be epinephrine. Okay, epinephrine. Okay. Yep. All right. So. Do you want me to tell the nurse to get that or? Yeah. Um, you know, I would wait to have it mixed up because our blood pressure actually is doing a little bit better right now okay. as this third liter goes in. Okay. So I think we're going to be okay, but just wanted you to always think about what am I going to do next. Okay. Okay. All right. We'll Mr. Have Shockley, we're going to kind of just pull your so point of care ultrasound is not necessarily going to tell us um, volume status of the LV, but it is okay. going to let us know if there's any wall motion abnormality. All right. And I do not see any wall motion abnormality. Everything's working well okay. uh, and function looks good. Okay. So with sepsis, you get global myocardial depression All right. sometimes, but I don't see that as the case. And the RV also looks good. You know, if yeah. there was a large PE that was causing this type of shock, then I would... Um, exactly, exactly. Okay. So let's take a look at that IVC. And you know what? I actually am not seeing collapse. I think this third liter is really doing the trick for us. And our, our blood pressure, look at that, maps up to 82. We can have the nurses start weaning down our norepinephrine. Okay. Okay. All right. All right, Mr. Shockley, we're going to get that off of you here. Hey, how are you feeling? Looking a little bit more awake, Mr. Shockley. Can you wiggle your toes for me? Great job. Let's check and see here. And in fact, his extremities are now cool just down to his ankle. I think we're making a lot of progress here. Okay, Allison. great. Okay. okay. Fantastic. Mr. Shockley, it looks like you've got an infection going on somewhere. We've sent off some cultures. And the surgeons also want to get a CAT scan of your abdomen to see what's going on. All right, we're going to go update your wife and we'll come back and see you in a little bit.